Your video game footage looks bad, but don't worry, I'm here to help. Hello everyone and welcome to Friday. Uh, this is a vlog that I've wanted to make for a really long time because I continue to see video game footage and Let's Play content uploaded to YouTube where the video game is not properly exposed. And I know what you're saying. Steven, doesn't exposure have everything to do with cameras and not video game capture hardware? Because shouldn't it just be correct? It should, but sometimes it gets it wrong, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm going to discuss that a little bit at the end of the video. But right now I'm going to dive into how to check and how to fix it. That way, before you upload your captured video game footage to YouTube, you can make sure that you're taking uh, full advantage of the entire dynamic range. So you're getting the brightest whites and the darkest darks. Let's jump to it. Um, so right now we're looking at a timeline that's got a few examples here so I can show you how to identify these problems and how to correct them. Um, I'm using Final Cut Pro 10, but you could use any modern NLE. They all have access to these tools. They all have access to Luma waveforms. Um, but I'll be showing you specifically how to do it in Final Cut Pro 10. So um, I've got two examples here. I've got uh, two examples of Mario, Morning Mario, uh, or Mario Maker and uh, two examples of Fallout 4. I'm gonna show you how to identify both. So the first one is Mario. You play Mario, look at that. Look at them go. This is wrong. And you're probably saying, what, how, what, how, what do you mean it's wrong? Well, let's compare it to this. You may not be able to catch it. Some of you might, um, but uh, there's a difference here. This is bright and vivid, and this is not. This is a little dull. And uh, to the untrained eye, it may look the same, but it's not. But you don't have to trust your eye, which is the great part about this. You can trust the beauty of the waveform. So on Final Cut Pro 10, uh, you open up your scopes by pressing Command 7. So that's what I've pressed. And uh, you might have a bunch of different options up here. Um, you might have the ability to look at two or three or whatever. I'm just looking at one thing right now. And uh, you can choose which scopes you're looking at. I'm using a waveform for Luma. And that's going to be uh, pretty pretty similar terminology no matter what you're using, whether you're on Premiere or, um, I, I don't know, Avid or Vegas or whatever. You will have access to this somewhere in your, uh, in your NLE. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to quickly give you a rundown of what this thing is, how it works, how to read it, and how to quickly tell if your video game footage is right or wrong. So now that I have this uh, Luma waveform open, uh, we can quickly look at these two different clips from two different captures of uh, Mario, and you'll notice something a little different about each of them. On this one, the, uh, the waveform is extending from 0 to 100. And on this one, the waveform is extending from, you know, what is this, like, 6 to 92. And the reason that that's a problem is 0 is black and 100 is white. And if your waveform is not extending the entirety of 0 to 100, then you are missing out on colors. You are you're you're compressing down what your picture is and you're making everything shift a little bit closer to gray. So what we need to do is we need to fix this. Now this is directly from the Elgato. I haven't altered this in any way. Both of these are. And I don't know what it is, but occasionally it spits out files like this. I do not know why. It happens both on Mac and on PC. Um, I'm not sure why this happens, but that's why I always take just a second to check it. So I open up my Luma waveform, and if it looks like this, and it's extending from 0 to 100, then I'm like, cool, awesome, it's fine, don't worry, that entire clip is set, you don't have to worry about the entire thing you captured. If it looks like this, we have to fix it. So you need to open up uh, your color correction tools on Final Cut Pro 10. it's Command-6, so it's really convenient because it's Command-6 and Command-7. We're going to go over to the Exposure tab, and we've got three sliders, we've got Shadows, Midtones, and Highlights. We are not going to bother with midtones because that's not what we need to adjust. What we need to adjust is the shadows. We're going to bring it down until that touches zero. We did it. Then we're going to bring the highlights up until they touch 100. We did it. 
That's it. We fixed it. The thing is, it's a big difference because if we if we close these again, so you can see this picture, and uh, let's bring up our our color board. That's before. That's after. We've breathed life into this video capture, and it's a it's a big deal. And whenever I see you know videos online like this, I've I've seen it so much where like I can identify it, and you know, with just a tiny, like, split second more of work, it, it will look like this. And I, I know the reason that people don't do it is because they don't know. So I'm here to make this video to hopefully help other people understand. Um, another thing I'll point out real quick is is your LumaScope um, or Luma waveform might be in millivolts. Um, I find that confusing. So I use IRE. That way it's from 0 to 100 and not 0 to 870 or whatever it is. Um, but that's that's my first example, and it was you know it was it's just such an easy fix, and we did it. Um, same thing over here. So we're gonna look at um, we're gonna look at two different clips of Fallout Four and do the same thing uh, on this end. So over here, I'm just gonna scrub through. This is a, a new this is a brand new episode of Fallout Four I recorded. As we scrub through, you are gonna see the uh, the waveform moving. And just a quick explanation of how this works. You're literally looking at the picture. So like the left side of the screen here on the on the waveform is the left side of the screen. So if you find, let's see here. So like you see how on uh, right here is there's this big yellow light right in the exact same spot of the waveform is that big yellow light. So that's a quick, a quick explanation of how that works. So if we scroll through, scrub through, you'll see like on the black loading screen, it's black. You know, it's down at zero where it should be. We continue to scroll through, scrub through, and you'll see that it's it's hitting up at 100. Now, remember, 100 is white. So, like, if it's not always hitting 100, make sure that, you know, you don't have something in your picture that's not supposed to be white. Um, because it'll only hit 100 if it's supposed to be white. But it's, it's up there. It's where it needs to be, which is good. Now, on a previous episode, the Elgato did the thing where, like, it crunched down my stuff. Why did it do that? I have no idea. But a quick, easy way for Fallout is to find uh, one of these loading screens uh, whenever you're going between areas. So I'll just find a spot. There we go. And you can see that this loading screen is supposed to be black. And it's not black. It's at 6. And we have to fix it the exact same way. We click this. We go to our shadows. And we drag them down until it gets to, to 0. And then we have to find something that's white... So we can, you know, quickly identify where it should be. So one of the easy things is um, on the Xbox One home menu, like all of this text, you can see this is where it, it stopped. You got all of these things like home, mixer, community, entertainment. Like these are all, this is white text. So we're going to just go over here and drag this until it gets up to 100 where it needs to be. And that's it. And then we can close these. And we can just, we can pick any spot in the video, and uh, whenever you turn it off and on, you know, it's it's like you're taking some of the Vaseline off of the the image. Like, it makes a huge difference. It breathes life into your picture. It's fantastic. And you could also, I guess, if you, if you don't know a whole lot about uh, color correction, um, like, if you're in a really dark spot, sometimes if I'm in a really, really dark spot, um, I'll also adjust the mids because the mids will make things uh, appear just a little bit brighter sometimes. Um, you could adjust that as well, but anyway, that's that's how you fix this. And, and this is a problem that I see time and time again, and I hope that this helps somebody um, to, to potentially fix it. Now, you might bring your footage in, and it might be correct, you know? And half the time, mine is. And... Uh, you know, and now Dan edits our stuff, but Dan knows to check for this. Um, half the time it's going to be fine. Half the time it's going to be wrong. And I do not know why that happens. My theory is that um, whenever you, like, if you have an Elgato connected and you open up your capture software, it, it basically blinks the HDMI connection. Like, if you're watching on a screen, you'll notice that it goes blank and then it comes back on. And sometimes that's when the exposure problems happen. Now, why it happens, I don't know. I have no idea. Sometimes it captures it correctly, sometimes it doesn't. 
Um, I use Elgato products. It may not be exclusive to Elgato. There might be other brands out there that have this problem, but this is how you fix it. It's a very quick and easy fix. You just open up your Luma waveforms. Does it fill it? Yes. Cool. Does it not fill it? No. Well, then I need to fix it. That's it. If you have any questions about this, um, just leave a, you know, a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, I use Final Cut Pro 10, but again, you can do this in everything. You can do this in Vegas. You can do this in uh, Premiere. Figure out how you do it, what your keyboard shortcuts are, and then if you're capturing video game footage, check before you you can, you can start your edit. You know, as soon as you get it into the timeline, check to make sure that everything's right. If it's right, go ahead. If it's not, take, you know, two seconds, fix it, and then it'll be perfect whenever you put it on YouTube. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, let's meet back tomorrow, shall we?